All right, so this is another video about nomenclature of benzene compounds. This is part two. Part one is a more basic introduction, and we go over some more complicated, slightly more complicated uh, molecules in this video. So check out part one, which will be on this playlist uh, on YouTube or Vimeo if you haven't checked that out or you want some more background. So let's go ahead and start naming some of these compounds. So, uh, in the first video, we talked about some basic rules for how you name benzenes, either by numbering the carbons or by using this system here, which you can do in certain cases, by naming things based to their relative positions to a certain R group uh, or a certain halogen or something like that attached to the benzene. So, a quick recap of that is if we have an R group here, well, let's get a marker that works here. Again. If we have an R group right up here, and then we have something that's one carbon away from that R group, then we can just call that, uh, whatever that group is, ortho to the R group. If we have something that's a one carbon down, another carbon down, or two carbons away from it, then from the R group up here, once again, we're just, everything is relative to this guy, then we can call that group meta. And if we have one that's three carbons down or on the exact opposite side of the benzene ring, right here, then that can just be called para. And you can shorten that, you can write out like if we had, uh, let's see, uh, metabromobenzene or something like that, you could write that out with meta, or you could just write the, the lowercase letter O, M, or P for ortho, meta, and para. So let's go through some examples here. We'll see some things we've talked about in the last video. So in the last video, I believe we had a compound that was a toluene compound which toluene is just whenever you have a benzene ring with this methyl group attached, that's going to make it toluene. So here we have bromine attached to the opposite side of toluene, to the uh, side opposite to the CH3. So we can go and name this compound a couple of ways. We have to start here, of course, at the, at the toluene if, if we're numbering with a one, and it doesn't matter which carbon we make two because this is gonna be a, you know, it's gonna be the same either way. Two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four. It's gonna be the fourth carbon either way. So two, three, four, five, six. We'll just name in a counterclockwise fashion for this guy. So this can have two names. The first one, if we wanna go by numbering, is going to be four romo, Toluene, or if we if we want to go by using this system right here, toluene, toluene. Okay, good. If we want to go by this system right here, then what is this group going to be? Ortho, meta, or para? Well, it's on the other side, so it's going to be para. So this could just be para bromo toluene, or of course just p bromo toluene. So all three, all three of these are acceptable names. Four bromo toluene, para bromo toluene, or p bromo toluene. So let's go on to another compound over here. We have a CH3 attached to this benzene, so this is going to be another toluene again. So how are we going to, let's see the color marker here. How about this guy? All right, how are we going to name him? Well, We've got CH3, so we said this is another toluene, and we have three iodine atoms attached. Well, let's go ahead and number, because we know we got, we've got more than just a couple things here, so we're not going to be able to use this system. This isn't going to work. So we need to number this. Well, how do we number it? We know that this guy is going to be one, of course, and then this, either one of these can be two, because it, once again, just like this compound, it doesn't really matter, because it's going to be the same either way around. So let's just do this counterclockwise as well. So we'll have this be carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, carbon five, and carbon six in our benzene. So we have an iodine group on what is now carbon two, one on carbon four, and one on carbon six. And just to emphasize why the numbering wouldn't matter, if we'd numbered this way, one, two, three, four, five, six, we'd still have one on two, four, and six. So this one, we're gonna just be able to name one way here, which is gonna be two, four, six, tri, iodo, toluene. Triodo because we have one, two, 
three of these and two, four, six because of their positions. And we know that toluene, we don't have to put what number the CH3 group is on because when we say toluene, we know there's a CH3 group and we know that it's going to be two carbons away, with CH3 being the one from the first iodine. If you remember from the last video, we have OH, which is going to make this not have the suffix benzene, but like these two guys had the suffix toluene, this one's going to have the suffix phenol. What other groups do we have attached? Well, we have a chlorine and an NO2, so this is going to add nitro to the compound. This one's, of course, going to add chloro. So, uh, we need to go ahead and number this guy. So, of course, the OH is going to be number one, and then this is going to be number two because we want to give priority uh, to the, the closest group, and of course, this for the next group would be four if we number this way, so that's not okay. So we're going to number clockwise here, and I think I might have said counterclockwise about the other two compounds when we, of course, number them clockwise, so sorry, just a slip of the tongue there. All right, four, five, six, so we've got our uh, compound number. Now what do we need to do? Well, let's go ahead and assign priority for how we're going to write out the name. We have two options. We have 2-nitro-4-chlorophenol, or we have 4-chloro-2-nitrophenol. Well, we're going to go with the latter because this one comes first in the alphabet, C before, before N. So we're going to have 4-chloro-2-nitrophenol. All right, and that's the name for this guy. So let's go and look at the rest of these. Now we have a C with three CH3s attached. So what does that look like? Well, let's, let's draw it out and make it a little less confusing. We have our benzene here, and we have a carbon here with three other carbons attached. Well, how about that? Does that look more familiar? Well, that's just a T-butyl group. So this is going to be tert-butyl. All right, and this guy here, one, two, three, straight in a row in a chain. This is just going to be a propyl group. So, we have anything else attached? No, we don't. So, what way are we going to order this? Well, we don't have anything that's going to change the name. This one is going to end in benzene. We don't have a CH3. We don't have, um, like here, an NH2 that will change this name to aniline. We don't have an OH to change it to phenol. We don't have uh, a carboxylic acid or a sulfur, uh, sulfur containing group. So, what are we going to do here? Well, this guy starts with T and this guy starts with P. So, you may say, well, P comes before T. Well, in this case, that may be true, but what you're looking for uh, when you're alphabetizing these is butyl, not the tert. So this is the guy that gets alphabetic prior uh, alphabetical priority because B comes before P. So you know, don't just make that quick mistake there because this one's going to come first. So we're going to end up making this guy carbon number one. So here's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So this is going to be one. Tert butyl. And what's this? 3 propyl benzene. Notice again, this one ends in benzene. All these have ended in phenol or toluene. This one is just a benzene compound. So, all right, let's go over to these last two guys over here. See how they're going to look. Does this one work? Yep. All right, good. So, I mentioned in passing when we were talking about the last one, this guy is not going to end in benzene. It's going to end in aniline. And why is that? Because of this NH2. Attaching this amine here changes the name to aniline. So, here's obviously where we're going to start our numbering. What way can, will we continue our numbering? Well, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Well, let's give this guy the best priority by calling it number three as opposed to five. So two, three, four, five, and six. So we have, you know, now we're not going to put one aniline. We're just going to put three, what's this group? CH2, CH3. This is an ethyl group. So we're going to have three ethyl aniline. And that's it for this guy. So we only have one more left to do. And if you notice, there's only one group attached to this benzene. It says COOH. 
which we should recognize as a carboxylic acid. So this is a shortened form. Let's go ahead and draw out this full structure, uh, expand it to see how this would look. In real life, we have our carbon here, and then the OO, it may be kind of misleading. These O's aren't actually bonded to each other. One is bonded like this to the carbon, and the other one is bonded with a sigma bond. We'll draw out that sigma bond to the carbon like this. So this is our carboxylic acid functional group right here, and that makes this guy have a very different name. So uh, when we draw that, of course, now we can, we can have um, other groups attached. We could have like a bromine or a chlorine or what have you, but when we just have this guy by himself, and this or this, these are equal, these are the same thing, this is just going to be benzoic acid. because of our carboxylic acid group here. So let's do something hypothetical and add some groups and see what we would change the name to if we added a few things. So I'm gonna do that in green and then the name will be in green for those. So let's go to the opposite side of the molecule and add a bromine. What's gonna happen there? Well, let's go back to these rules again. On the opposite side of the molecule is para. So we had para bromotoluene over here with our bromine being on the other side of a CH3. So, we can have here para bromo benzoic acid. Just like toluene or phenol or aniline or whatever, you, whatever have you, the benzoic acid is still going to just be the end name for every single one of them. No matter what we have here, if we had uh, we are here, then we would have to, we could say, well, we could, we could also say, meta, well, no, let's just do numbering, so we'll have one, two, three, four, five, so this would be a two, three, dibromo benzoic acid. So, that's benzoic acid, is a new one we've introduced here, and I believe, yeah, we already had uh, phenol and toluene and um, aniline on the last video. So here is para bromo benzoic acid. Uh, if we have just one of these bromo groups, but if we have both of them, then it goes up here and it's this guy, the two, three dibromo benzoic acid. And if we don't have any of them, if we just exclude this and just use this guy, then it's just benzoic acid. So there you go. That's a couple good examples for uh, some uh, more benzene nomenclature.